We are learning more information now right here about the former president, Donald Trump, as the Trump campaign says that the former president has been indicted in this probe by special counsel Jack Smith. Of course, we are learning this here on Live Now from Fox, the former president. This is the third such indictment there relating uh, to different things, one being in New York on falsified business records, also in Florida on the handling of classified documents. I do want to put up a live picture there uh, in Bedminster, as this is a live picture overhead uh, at a residence of the former president there, uh, as this the Bedminster estate. We did see uh, when they were looking for classified documents, Mar-a-Lago down there in Palm Beach, Florida, this uh, in the northeast there. So uh, the Trump campaign saying the former president has been indicted, of course, uh, following this here very, very closely on Live Now from Fox. We're going to hear from legal experts on what this means uh, as the Trump campaign saying this here uh, still very much uh, sealed. You can see a motorcade there here on Live Now from Fox outside of uh, this estate. They are zooming in very, very closely, uh, potentially some security as well there. The former president making his home has uh, bounced back and forth between New Jersey and also Florida. So we're just going to stick with this shot here on Live Now from Fox, of course, potentially waiting. The former president did say that he uh, would potentially be indicted by the special counsel after 5 p.m. on the East Coast as uh, we're learning new information as the former president was indicted on Tuesday and charges stemming from special counsel Jack Smith's investigation into the Capitol riot on January 6, 2021. This is the second federal indictment the former president faces out of Smith's investigation. Trump, who leads the 2024 GOP presidential primary field, has already pleaded not guilty to 37 counts related to his alleged improper retention of classified records from his presidency. Those charges include willful retention of national defense information, conspiracy uh, as well. The charges uh, there include willful retention of national defense information, conspiracy to obstruct justice, and false statements. You can see potentially a motorcade there uh, as we're following this. This is a live picture there in Bedminster, uh, New Jersey, but we also have a live picture out of Washington, D.C., where the indictment came down. So these are two live pictures, one in the Northeast there, one in our nation's capital. So following this here is the indictment handed down. We are hearing reaction from a lot of these different things. Uh, so let's continue to follow this, and I'll set up other shots here on Live Now. So we are still awaiting that. I do want to put up a statement here on Live Now from Fox. Of course, this coming in from Fox News Digital here. Uh, of course, this from the Trump campaign on this indictment handed up in this January 6th probe. This is nothing more than the latest corrupt chapter in the continued pathetic attempt by the Biden crime family and their weaponized Department of Justice to interfere with the 2024 presidential election in which President Trump is the undisputed front runner leading by substantial margin. So this, the Trump campaigning confirming this, that the former president has been indicted on this January 6th probe. Of course, that's a statement from the Trump campaign there uh, as we're just less than a month out from a potential debate. This will throw a lot of wrinkles into that one as well. A live picture there in Bedminster, the estate. We do see a, uh, a caravan there, some security vehicles, potentially for former President Trump, potentially not. Uh, so we will continue on. Uh, we're going to bring in some legal experts here in just a moment to break down on what this means. But what we do know now uh, is that Trump campaign saying the former president indicted there in this January 6th probe. All right, so this is still a live look there, Bedminster. You can see just still some milling about, so we'll keep an eye on this shot right now. But I do want to bring in my colleague here on Live Now from Fox, Andrew Kraft. Thank you so much for joining us, of course. 
former President Trump saying this coming down today. Maybe what is the latest? What do we know here as we continue to kind of unseal all of these uh, latest developments? Yeah, so um, Andy, we have kind of two separate tracks right now. The Trump campaign is telling Fox News Digital uh, that the former president has been indicted uh, in the January 6th probe. Uh, what that means is that is now the third indictment against the former president, one in state court now in New York, and two now in federal court. But um, the grand jury in Washington, D.C. there uh, at the Prettyman Courthouse today uh, has essentially handed up this indictment, but the defendant is not named. Uh, and so it is currently under seal. Uh, and so right now, as far as that track is concerned, we haven't gotten any confirmation from special counsel Jack Smith's team, uh, from any you know, other reporters covering this today. There were a lot of reporters who were kind of uh, staked out outside of the courthouse there in Washington, D.C. We are only learning uh, from the Trump campaign itself that Donald Trump has been indicted in the January 6th Capitol attack probe led by special counsel Jack Smith. So I think those yeah. two points are, are very, very important to make. We're only learning about this from the Trump campaign that in fact it is Donald Trump and he has been indicted. But right now, as far as the grand jury is concerned and the special counsel Jack Smith's team is concerned, who has to now prosecute this, the grand jury handed up the indictment, meaning they voted on it presumably today. Um, but that indictment is under seal and the defendant, one defendant we're being told, has now been uh, you know, unnamed, not even assigned a, a number. Uh, so uh, we wanted to make that distinction yeah. there, uh, but you're looking at a lot of different vantage points and scenes we have both from Washington and there in New Jersey. Yeah, Andrew Kraft, I do want to bring in a point because those were two very good points there. This is very fluid. We watched it with the last two indictments as well, talking about this is, uh, of course, now we're learning new information. Trump indicted on four counts tied to efforts to undermine the 2020 election, including conspiracy to defraud. That one is going to be a very highly talked about a headline that we'll continue to follow, of course, indicted on those four counts, of course, also on 37 counts related uh, to classified documents as well. We're looking alive at Bedminster. So uh, as people continue to zoom in, potentially a motorcade for the former president there. Uh, what do we make of this? Conspiracy was a big one uh, as well. What do we what do we make of these and those four counts trying to be added to 37 and two separate indictments? Yeah, so Andy, um, you know, I had been asking all of our legal experts in the run up to this indictment today, what would the charges be? Uh, and you always heard that uh, in some of our conversations and some of the reporting. Um, that it would be conspiracy to defraud the U.S. government. And so now, according to the Associated Press, Trump has been, like you said, indicted on four counts tied to efforts to undermine the 2020 election, including conspiracy to defraud the United States government. Now, Andy, remember uh, when we got the federal indictment from Jack Smith there in Florida on the classified documents investigation, um, you know, it came out piecemeal. Remember, early on, we were told about several charges, and then it ended up into more than 30 Charges And remember, Andy, just last week in the classified documents probe there in federal court in Florida, uh, a superseding indictment was handed up just last week. Uh, and they charged the former president with yet another count of willful retention of documents. And they added a third defendant, the head of maintenance at Mar-a-Lago, Carlos de Oliveira. He appeared in court yesterday in Florida. Now, in that case, Andy, uh, other outlets are reporting that August 10th, uh, is the arraignment for that superseding indictment regarding Donald Trump and his personal valet and aide, Walt Nauta. Uh, so uh, that is happening August 10th. We're what? This is August 1st. Uh, and so the first RNC primary debate is August the 23rd in Milwaukee. We still have no idea if former President Donald Trump is even going to show up to that. He is far and away the front runner uh, in this primary process for the GOP nomination for president in 2024. Um, but we just have to make uh, it a point, and you're going to hear me repeat this all throughout the night. This is so historic. In, a, in the course of about four months, Andy, three indictments, one in state court uh, and one in federal court in Florida, and presumably, according to the Trump campaign, one in federal court in D.C., have been handed down against former president Donald Trump. This has never happened before. I said that when the first indictment came down. I said that when the second federal indictment came down. And now 
the third. So the Trump campaign is responding to this, Andy, as well, and they have issued a lengthy statement first reported to Fox News Digital. We're going to get that up. Do you have? I don't think we have that just yet. Uh, we're about to get that yeah. up. There we, there we have it. You go with that, that report, that uh, statement. All right, there we go. There is the statement up right now. I'll read it out for you, Kraft, as uh, we continue to follow this. Of course, thank you for sticking with us. Sure. Certainly uh, a very big breaking news story like you just mentioned here. Certainly unprecedented uh, over the terms of this. Is this from this Trump campaign? This is nothing more than the latest corrupt chapter in the continued pathetic attempt by the Biden crime family and their weaponized Department of Justice to interfere with the 2024 presidential election in which President Trump is undisputed frontrunner and leading by substantial margin. So that coming in from the Trump campaign. And certainly we also talked about uh, this here uh, for a lot of legal experts on it. Of course, the motorcade still outside there in Bedminster, New Jersey, his estate, potentially that's where former President Trump is. Of course, we were also hearing about Fulton County. We just heard from our Fox 5 team about this, but this doesn't do much for the 2024 election. We've talked a lot about that and maybe what this means for that as we continue to get new information. Uh, maybe talk a little bit about the 2024 campaign and maybe what it potentially means for that, Kraft. Well, you know, Andy, I think that still remains uh, to be seen. Uh, I mean, you're going to see Donald Trump, uh, and we have seen of the last three now indictments, only go up in the polls after all of these uh, legal troubles have been hounding him uh, throughout really the entirety of 2023. Um, so it's a weird effect, right? Uh, it seems like with especially Republican primary voters, his support only gets stronger. They see this. Uh, you know, as a two-tier system of justice. They think the Department of Justice is weaponized against the former president. Uh, and so that is the line you're hearing from Republican primary voters, but also the scores uh, of Republican challengers who are also vying for the nomination as well, trying to beat Donald Trump for the nomination. So uh, we're getting a little more detail yeah. right now on those four counts in the federal indictment. Remember, Andy, we, we brought you already, according to the Associated Press, conspiracy to defraud the U.S. government. Uh, we also know that uh, of those other counts, conspiracy to obstruct an official proceeding, attempted conspiracy to obstruct an official proceeding, and conspiracy against rights. Um, so uh, this official proceeding that everyone now, uh, I'm going to res remind everyone that official proceeding was on January 6th when the electoral count uh, was going to take place. It's a ceremonial proceeding in the House chamber, joint session of Congress there. Uh, and that is what Jack Smith and his team of prosecutors are alleging that former President Donald Trump, according to the Trump campaign, uh, conspired to obstruct. Uh, and that is uh, when the electoral count, the votes were to be accepted by then Vice President Mike Pence uh, to declare Joe Biden the winner of the 2020 election. Andy. Yeah, thank you so much, Kraft. Uh, we're just getting more and more information here on live now from Fox. We appreciate it. I do want to put up this tweet, though, uh, from the Justice Department. Of course, we're going to hear potentially in the next 15 or so minutes from special counsel Jack Smith making a statement. Of course, this uh, a tweet there is uh, entitled on those four counts, including conspiracy to obstruct official proceedings. Of course, we are getting all these legal minds here on live now from Fox about this. Of course, we're following it very much coast to coast here uh, from this day is uh, certainly a very big uh, case. We're going to continue on here on Live Now from Fox, and hopefully we can bring in one of our, our legal experts here on the line uh, as uh, this continues on. Uh, Andrew Lieb, can you hear us here on Live Now from Fox? So you're going to be joined here by uh, Andrew Kraft and Andy Mack here. Thank you so much for joining us here on Live Now from Fox. You're live here uh, as these developments come down. President, former President Trump saying it's coming down today. It happened. Maybe what do we make of it? And certainly the conspiracy to defraud charge what are we uh, kind of first takeaways of this? Well, the first takeaway is three indies on the same show is the only way that the world should exist. But I have this 45 page indictment right here and I'm reading it and it's got a lot in there. And I think the biggest thing so far that I'm reading is that Donald Trump engaged in three criminal conspiracies, they're saying. And they're saying these conspiracies were all about making the election delegitimized. What's interesting so far of what I'm reading is that we have a lot of co-conspirators. 
There's six named co-conspirators in here. They don't say their names, but they're telling us about them. I would guess the first one's Rudy Giuliani as they're talking about attorneys, but I got to read it a lot more thoroughly. 45 pages, as Trump normally does, Andy. He called it. He said they were going to do it. He was a few minutes early, but I like a guy that's early. They are indicting the president on four counts, as you're reporting. Yeah, thank you so much. And we got a lot going on this screen, but you can see there the live picture as well as we continue on. Of course, this is a live picture there uh, of what we're expecting to hear from this indictment there, a statement from Jack Smith. So we just want to keep that up in a box so we know everybody we're watching it here uh, at about 15 or so minutes. And uh, of course, uh, I know my colleague Andrew Kraft has uh, plenty of questions for him. So I'm going to kind of turn the tables over to you and, and uh, you take it away, Andrew Kraft. Okay, so uh, yeah, you're looking at that live picture inside uh, the DOJ headquarters, uh, the uh, headquarters where Special Counsel Jack Smith and his team have been meeting uh, to bring this case. So we're expecting uh, a statement from Jack Smith. Uh, now, remember, uh, Andrew, the day the indictment, the first federal indictment was brought against former President Trump there in Florida, Jack Smith also uh, made a very, very brief statement, uh, you know, and I can remember, and he said as much, you know, that he was not going to be deterred, that he was not going to be threatened, that he was going to carry this out uh, to the full faith and, and, and effect uh, that the law would take him. Uh, and so I think that is so interesting right now because I, I, I say the words deja vu, and I've said them a lot this spring and summer, but this is what we're seeing yet again uh, in a different jurisdiction now, Washington, D.C., uh, in the January 6th probe. Uh, and, and we learned about this yet again, Andrew, from the Trump campaign, yeah. from the Trump team. Uh, and so, you know, the indictment was under seal. And then the Trump camp told us that no Trump has been indicted in this. But he told us that two weeks ago, that he was going to be indicted and arrested, that he was the subject of this target letter in the January 6th Pro. But I want to get your thoughts on the charges themselves, conspiracy to obstruct an official proceeding, attempted to conspiracy to obstruct an official proceeding uh, and conspiracy to defraud the U.S. government. What are we looking at as far as charges go, as far as, you know, time in prison? What's the punitive damages that former President Trump could be facing now with this indictment today? Oh, that's a, a lot in there, but I need to start off by saying it does feel like deja vu. I think you called it right, Andrew. I think the key is that he told us he tried to end run the process, but what you can do is you can go on the PACER system, that's the federal court system yourself, and you could find this just like I did. It's at 23 cr 00257 and it's actually called the United States of America versus Donald J. Trump and I'm reading it as we're going here and what I think the most interesting part so far for me as we're going through before we even get into the magnitude of the charges is I think the most interesting thing is that they're naming the states in which they tried to deal with stuff there's a whole pages on this so as I go through here we read about Arizona that's one of the places that we're going on I go forward and it says Georgia and then I keep going and I keep going because what's interesting here is we hear about Michigan just to remind you the fake electors got arrested in Michigan we have Pennsylvania as they keep going they go talk about Wisconsin and I think what a lot of people were saying when we were looking at this originally Andrew is what about those when they went to the Capitol where did they go to the Capitol and what I'm seeing is the lead here is about those fake electors that's where I'm getting this conversation but to answer your question a lot of these charges are 20 plus years. You have to add them up. I haven't actually went through the 45 pages in detail yet, but for a guy close to 80, getting a 20 years in jail, that's kind of like a life sentence. He already has 450 years he's facing in South Florida, forgetting New York. This is a major thing, but we can't stop and get into the politics of it for a second. We need to step away and get into the magnitude of what Jack Smith is doing here. He's indicting because because there was a scheme, a scheme, a conspiracy to defraud the United States. That's the lead of this. And I think it takes up about 45, I mean, 40 of the 45 pages. The first count, that's the main deal, Andrew. And this first count is talking about all these different states and their fake electors. And I think it's really serious. We have major counts. And I think that it's really got to be a, a weight on Donald Trump right now. He's trying to spin it and use um, adjectives for Jack Smith and come out and make it about the election. But 
You know, I got to tell you, anyone who gets an indictment like this should be sitting on their couch with their head down and saying, wow, I have the magnitude of the U.S. government. And by the way, in D.C. attacking us, that's where we got this case going. And I think this is a really big deal. I want to share with you, though, that I think is kind of interesting that we have Judge Tanya Chutkin. That's who's going to be involved on this. And we're going to see what happens next, Andrew and Andy. Yeah, and I, I do have to ask you about this because, you, like you mentioned, it doesn't have to do with this upcoming election does have to do with the previous election. Potentially, we could see it with around Georgia. We did talk to Fulton County out there. Uh, this is maybe unusual to hear from Jack Smith, a special counsel. You're looking at a, a big live picture. It's supposed to be coming up in about 10 minutes. Maybe what could we hear from this press conference? Because this feels unusual to say, unprecedented to say the least. Will he just read the indictment? Will there be more information? Maybe what do we expect out of this press conference? Because I don't think anyone has ever seen this before. I don't think he's going to take questions questions there. I yeah. I mean, last we did see it last time, Andy. Remember okay. that for about three minutes, he came out, he made a very, very brief statement, and then he walked away. Uh, and so that is kind of what I am anticipating. Um, but as far, like Andy was saying, Andrew, as far as special counsels go, they can't really answer a lot of questions. So I'm not anticipating any questions taken at this, right? So they can't speak unless the judge lets them speak. He had to get permission last time, if you remember what happened, to come out and give that press conference. And they're really restricted. I expect him to be stoic, express the dignity of his office. He's a special counsel in the United States and really try and give Donald Trump a fair shake. While Donald Trump is playing politics, Jack Smith is paying, playing courtroom decorum. So I don't expect much to come out of it besides the document speaks for itself. We charged him, he's gonna get to defend himself and we'll see where the cards fall. I see that is really what's going on. And to your point, Andrew, I agree. I don't see him taking any questions. Okay, my, my question though to you, Andrew, is you know um, all of us watched last summer uh, the House January 6th Select Committee uh, there on Capitol Hill, you know, have a pretty thorough investigation into the origins of January 6th and their final report at the conclusion of, of the committee's work there. I will be looking for the in, in, in the indictment whether or not there is anything new that Jack Smith gleaned from the January 6th investigation, or is this going to be everything we already knew that the committee uncovered uh, but now, obviously, Special Counsel Jack Smith has, you know, prosecutorial oversight uh, and charging discretion. But that's <coughs> what I will be looking for. We followed that so closely. A lot of Americans followed it so closely on Capitol Hill, the House January 6th Select Committee, with all of the witness testimony, everything like that. Uh, but I don't know, and, and I don't know if you can answer this question. Have you seen anything different or new in the indictment that we did not know before. Remember, Andrew and Andy, this has been litigated in public view since January 6th happened. Now, what, two and a half years ago? Well, I'm going to give you a quick answer is that when I saw January 6th in the committee, the focus was about how them coming to the Capitol and the hanging Mike Pence. And the focus was about security and what was going on with the Oath Keepers and what was going on with the Proud Boys, and what was going on with Trump not saying about don't be violent for so long. But what's interesting in this indictment, it's 45 pages, you have to get to page 39 before you read the defendant's exploitation of the violence and chaos at the Capitol. Meaning that we're talking a lot of stuff about what's going on in these states. I think that the states and these fake electors plays a bigger role but I'm hesitant to give you a detailed an analysis because, again, 45 pages, and I haven't read it all yet. Yeah, we're just getting the indictment now, I believe, here. Yeah. We're going to pour over it. Uh, we're thanking our producers where they just put it in front of me here. Uh, so I know at the uh, you know beginning of this conversation, Andy and I were discussing that uh, it was under seal. Obviously, that's no longer the case. Right. Uh, and, and so we are also learning, Andy and Andrew, that... Uh, Trump has to appear in court in D.C. on Thursday. That's a quick turnaround, is it not? We're going to see yet again, I'm saying deja vu yet again, a whole spectacle, a whole circus descending on the nation's capital later this week uh, and, and watch it all unfold again. 100 percent. Thursday is going to be a real deal. He's going to have to appear. They're going to have an arraignment. They're going to see what they're going to do with this. But the big difference, I think, between this and the Florida case, we're saying we're going to do it all again is Florida has lots of details. Florida has lots of counts. Florida, though, has, and here's the big thing, this is only four counts. Florida has documents that have security clearance. This case doesn't. 
those security clearance documents, Andy and Andrew, are going to make Florida get delayed and delayed for who can see them, how we can see them, what we do with them, and who knows what Judge Cannon's going to end up doing and getting them going forward. This case is a much simpler case. It's more straightforward of a case. So I'm expecting this case to go first. This is going to move faster than the Florida case. So what I think we're going to see beyond the arraignment is learning very quickly how fast this case is going to move. And this is going to happen before we're in November of the next year. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that because obviously we don't want to get too much into the political ramifications of this, but certainly this has to do with the last election. How quickly can they try to wrap this up and maybe how prepared is Washington DC because they deal with different leaders from around the world. They deal with President Biden and the motorcade, different shutting downs of things. But but how quickly can it happen? And Thursday does feel very, very quick to appear before the judge. Andy, I think that it's going to be very fast. I think, as you just pointed out, with the president, the motorcade, and how they have to deal with security for people like Mitch McConnell and Chuck Schumer and all the leaders in the House and Senate, I think that they're ready for this. And the difference, again, is this is four counts. Four counts is much different than having 41 counts. That's what he has in Florida. Four counts. And again, this isn't dealing with documents and security and national security and top secret and classified. This is dealing with a more straightforward case. But to loop back what I think is most interesting, and I remember it so well. I don't know if you gentlemen remember as well, but right after in Michigan, one of the fake electors got indicted. And she was a, a lady in her 60s or 70s. She came right out on TV and she was like, they tricked me. They fooled me. And what I heard her saying is, listen, I'm going to flip on whoever I have to flip upon not to go to jail. And when I read this indictment, I go on here and on page five, it says Arizona, Georgia, Michigan, Nevada, New Mexico, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin. We have fraudulent slates of electors. And I think that's a very interesting part about this case that is what the public's missing. The public sees this in a lot of ways of what we watched on video on January 6th, and that's in there. Yeah. But I think the biggest thing about this is the technicality of we have electors in the states. They have to vote. There's rules about this. And apparently, he, Trump in his orbit is being charged with his co-conspirators. I think there's six of them, I think I said before. Six, yes, yeah, six co-conspirators, they're saying. They manipulated these people somehow to go and pose as if they were the electors to try and take what was legitimately someone else's job, someone else's role, someone else's certification. And I think that's a much simpler case to prove than to go through all these documents and whether they were stored in the wrong toilet room. Okay. You know, I just want to remind the viewers, uh, we have the shot up. We're expecting remarks from Special Counsel Jack Smith there in Washington at the DOJ headquarters, um, where he and his team have been conducting this, uh, you know, throughout the last uh, almost year uh, when Merrick Garland, we were told, appointed Jack Smith to look into this, but also to look into the classified documents probe. Uh, so that's coming up in about two minutes. So uh, I'm going to ask a question, uh, and I know it's going to be quite complicated of an answer because I want to play the devil's advocate here uh, because in part three on the second page of the indictment, Andrew, it says the defendant had a right, like every American, to speak publicly about the election and even to claim falsely that there had been outcome determinative fraud during the election and that he had won. Because I have asked you about this time and again. What about the First Amendment uh, free speech grounds on this? It's not a crime for the former president to think he won the 2020 election and to say as much to his supporters um, do you think that's going to be a legal hurdle in prosecuting this, getting to the state of mind, mens rea, of the former president, saying that, you know, we can't get into his state of mind. He can say he won the election all he wants. He has that right on free speech grounds, but the conspiring to defraud is a whole other thing, right? Help me unpack that. What a great question. I'll tell you, the U.S. Supreme Court has addressed this before. And in simplest terms, we all learned you can't yell fire in a crowded room, meaning there's limits to free speech. And you can't incite violence. You can't incite violence. There, you can, there's limits to free speech. And I'm looking right now, as you're saying that, on um, page six. And it says, after it became public on the afternoon of January 6th, the vice president would not fraudulently alter the election results. A large and angry crowd, including many individuals whom the defendant had deceived into believing the vice president could and might change the election results. So can he say that the vice president can change the election results? Is that inciting violence? Is there exceptions? So to answer your question, there's going to be a line there. And guess what? 
a lot of this has been litigated already when they were going to the grand jury and witnesses didn't want to testify and we were trying to block the witnesses. But Andrew, it's about inciting violence in one note and defrauding with the fake electors in another one. The charge, just to be crystal clear, and I haven't studied all the 45 pages, but from what I've read so far, does not say Donald J. Trump is charged with lying about whether he won the election. That's not the charge, and that couldn't be a charge, and that would be First Amendment protection. Instead, the charge is conspiracy to defraud the United States with these fake electors. Conspiracy to obstruct an official proceeding, that January 6th thing. Conspiracy against rights, obstruction of a proceeding. These aren't about First Amendment, although I'm sure, just so we're clear, Andy and Andrew, if I was Donald Trump's lawyer, I would throw every motion in the sun and say, hey, listen, First Amendment, First Amendment, you can't stop me. But I'm guessing that's not going to be a winning argument. Again, I think it was 1980. There was a U.S. Supreme Court case that said there's exceptions, there's limits when it comes to free speech, and you can't incite violence, Andrew. Yeah, and I was going to ask you, that was a really good question just about the First Amendment. It looks like uh, the reporters are kind of filling into their seats, so potentially this could be coming up very soon here. So we'll jump into that uh, in the middle of a question, in the middle of an answer. But we also saw potentially coming down today another indictment in Georgia. Maybe how are those two related, this indictment that was unsealed, the conspiracy to defraud, but also a potential indictment in Georgia. Uh, could those be overlapping at all? How does that work entirely? Well, Georgia's named in this indictment multiple times, Andy. They named Georgia. They have a whole page on Georgia because, again, Georgia is one of the places, just to remind you, where we have that phone call. I just need this amount of votes and dealing with fake electors again. And so there could be overlapping stuff. But I'll tell you, before I came on the air with you all, a lot of people are saying, what's happened? What's your position? What do you think happened? And I said, you can't analyze a legal proceeding unless you read the indictment. How do you know without reading the papers? So I think you and I and Andrew, we're all just throwing darts against the wall about what Fannie Willis is gonna do down in Georgia. But until she does it, we don't know. We're hearing from a lot of people, it's gonna be more of a RICO type of statute, uh, a violation there like they use against the mob. But again, we don't know. Yeah. What's interesting here is that Georgia is named multiple times here. There is gonna be some overlap, but a big distinction is even if a Republican is to win president, whether it's Trump or someone else, a Republican that wants to, and maybe a Democrat too, but that wants to say, listen, I'm going to get Trump out of this. He, uh, I'm going to pardon him. That won't cut it in Georgia because in Georgia, a federal pardon wouldn't cut it. So even if the charges have a lot of overlap, the implications of those charges, Andy, are very different. Okay, I guess just lastly, I know we uh, are now past the top of the hour. It looks like Jack Smith is uh, running a little late. Uh, we're going to get those statements from the special counsel soon. But, you know, Andrew, my question to you is I, I want to ask if you can maybe draw some distinctions or comparisons to the federal indictment in the classified documents probe. The strength or lack thereof of the case itself. Is this stronger? I know you haven't read the whole thing because we just got it. Uh, but from what you have seen already, is it stronger? Is it not as strong as the classified documents, federal indictment, uh, now that superseding indictment, 41 counts, these are four counts. Um, what's the easier case to prosecute? Well, I'm going to give you different aspects of stronger. This case is going to go faster. So if you're looking for a faster case, if that's your definition of stronger, then this is the stronger case. That case in Florida is going to have a worse jury for the prosecutor. So it's a weaker case in terms of your jury. You got more of a Republican jury. D.C. is a really Democratic jury, a terrible forum for Trump to be in. So when you look at stronger, D.C., this case, is stronger for the prosecutor, for, a, for the special counsel, Jack Smith. But when you just get to substance, and I haven't analyzed every aspect of this case, but just from watching movies. Like I, I like watching all the law movies and you could even start off with my cousin Vinny when he's asking about the grits. It's that simple when you get the Florida case.
The Florida case has audio recordings of Trump admitting that he didn't declassify documents while showing those very documents. You can't get better evidence than that. So when you're looking at a, just a plain analysis, if it was a law school exam, you take out Trump, you take out the timeline, you take out which jury it is, and you just say, which one is a case that you would think you have a better defense on? This one's probably an easier defense because there's no tape recording of him admitting that he knew that he was violating the law when he did it. In Florida, they have that. So I don't, don't see that in here yet, but 45 pages, for all I know, they have a video too. Yeah, and coming up in just a minute, I just want to give us a little bit of a roundup of what we're looking at here. We've been talking to attorney there, Andrew Lieb, quite a bit. It's uh, the Andy Show. Uh, Andy Mack here alongside Andrew Kraft. Andrew Lieb, thank you so much for joining us. I want to give you just a few live now looks of what we're looking at as we continue to await Jack Smith there. There's a live picture uh, there outside or inside the courtroom, the podium set up. We're expecting to hear from Jack Smith coming up in just a little bit. I also want to give you a picture uh, in Bedminster, New Jersey. You can see the motorcade potentially outside of this estate there. Former President Trump spending quite a bit of time there between his Mar-a-Lago estate as well in Bedminster. So those are two shots we're following here very closely on Live Now from Fox. Of course, uh, that press conference hopefully coming up very soon. Of course, learning new in information as Trump indicted on those four counts tied to efforts to undermine the 2020 election, including conspiracy to defraud uh, the U.S. Of course, we're following this and it's also uh, expected to summon to appear before a federal judge on Thursday in Washington, D.C., of course. Uh, so we're just waiting here on live now from fix for all of this to happen. And I think we dove into quite a bit. Is there anything else, Kraft uh, or Lee, we can think about to, to discuss going, going as we await for Jack Smith? I guess I just wanted to reiterate, because I told the viewers they're going to hear me say this a lot, and Andrew can chime in, because I know he, he has thoughts on this, but... For any individual, let alone a former president of the United States, to be facing three indictments in, in the course of four months, two in federal court, one in state court, is almost, you know, mind-boggling to even comprehend. It really, like, shocks the conscience that a, a single individual could be facing so many legal entanglements as he is running to be president of the United States for a second time. He's running for a third time, but he wants to be president for the second time. Um, it, it just kind of boggles the mind that we're in this position in history, uncharted territory, and we don't know how this is gonna end up, Andrew uh, and Andy, we don't know. Because remember, Eileen Cannon, she set the trial date for May 24th, 2024, next year in the classified documents trial. Um, and then this is another whole proceeding that needs to get underway. He has to get arraigned. He has to get booked and arrested on the charges. And then we're in the same place yet again. Also, uh, we have to have the New York trial there in state court. And there were efforts by the Trump camp to move the New York trial out of state court into federal court. Uh, he was denied outright. There were also so many motions down there in Fulton County in Georgia to dismiss the grand jury report completely, to get Fannie Willis, the DA, off the case completely, and they wanted to move it outside of Fulton County. All of those efforts um, you know, proved futile, uh, and the former president's legal team tried as much as they could. They came up short in court. All of this is happening at once, Andrew. I, I can't really wrap my head around all of it. I have to echo what you're saying, and I have to tell you, it's a testament for Donald Trump that he's not having a nervous breakdown right now. I couldn't imagine dealing with one indictment like this. He has two going on. He has the New York case like you're talking about before, federal, and then the New York civil case as well. Right. We have, so that's four right there. And he's running for president, as you mentioned. And a lot of people um, comment when I'm on the with you guys and we're talking and they're saying hey why are you saying it's a bad position to be in why are you saying that trump's got problems and the sheer number of charges against him is the answer to your question it's not about whether he can win any singular charge but i like to give the analogy like this if you have a house and you have a leak in your bathroom maybe you could fix the leak then you got a leak on your roof maybe you could fix the leak then your refrigerator breaks Maybe you can fix the refrigerator. Then your stove's broken. Maybe you can fix the stove. Then there's a fire. And you get the whole point over there. It's just overwhelming to think about. And I represent a lot of clients. 
any one of these cases would shut down the office and be the only thing we could be focusing on. It's so big. I can't understate how big it is. And this case right here, this false electors aspect of the case. And to answer your question before, Andrew, there's an entire part of this case. And you asked me about it before. And while you were talking, I was reading it. Page seven and eight. And I'm just going to put it up here. They show how Donald Trump knew on page seven and eight that he had lost the election. They spent so much detail in it and to go through the evidence and to go through this. I have to tell you, he always talked about his stamina when he was running for office, the stamina that he's still tweeting today, or what he doesn't tweet, he truths, the, the stamina that he's still truthing today and not drinking himself silly is unbelievable to me yeah. because it's overwhelming. That's the only way I can explain it. I'm overwhelmed and I'm not the defendant in the case. So I just I just wanted to ask it again, just to follow up, because uh, it's going back to the former president's state of mind. To me, and to the legal analysts and experts that I've spoken with, like yourself. I, oh, we got Jack Smith. I don't want to cut right, in here. Yeah, let's, let's take Jack Smith here live, raw, and unfiltered here on live now from Fox. Expect special counsel Jack Smith to come to this podium and make a statement of about two minutes in length. He will not take questions. If you have any questions after the press conference is over, please see me on the side. Any questions right now? Don't do it. All right. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So that was uh, still there going on. So they're awaiting him very, very momentarily as we continue, on. But like you're talking about, and I will also echo, echo it, just the amount of entanglements, the complexities of all of these yeah. things going on. Uh, and you mentioned the analogy there with fixing up a house and different things going wrong with the house. And it almost feels like the next thing is also the priority thing. What is the priority for Donald Trump in this? Can we can we get inside of his mind a little bit? Because like we said, the, the classified documents, the civil case in New York, I mean, the priorities must be very difficult to manage here when you're looking at all these legal complexities around it. What's the most important thing that he has to focus on today? You ever play Jenga? Yeah. That's a dangerous thing When you thing play, to play Jenga, when you're playing Jenga, you pull out one piece and it all goes falling down. He's got to win the presidency. His best bet is to forget all this stuff win the presidency, get the populace behind him, convince New York, whoever the governor is at that time, whether it's Kathy Hochul or someone else, convince the governor in Georgia, even if he loses, if they prosecute someone else, go for pardons, win president. That's his best bet, I think, because otherwise I don't see how you fight wars on so many fronts at the same time and statistically come out and win every war. It would be unheard of to win every count against him. You know, federal prosecutors have like a 95 percent conviction rate. And this is Jack Smith, who is like bringing in a Navy SEAL. It's not just like the normal Navy. He's the best of the best. It's like Top Gun we're watching right now. So he's the best of the best and he's maverick. So we're going to see what happens here. But his best bet is to campaign, campaign, campaign. I think that's what he's doing. Yeah. And he's making this into a sideshow and going for winning president. I don't know about you fellas, but I see his best move is to win on the political front and hope the political front lets him pardon himself and then motivates others to pardon him. All right, Andrew, Lee, thank you so much for joining us. We're seeing now Jack Smith step to the podium. Let's just take this here live on Unfiltered. Good evening. Today, an indictment was unsealed, charging Donald J. Trump with conspiring to defraud the United States, conspiring to disenfranchise voters, and conspiring and attempting to obstruct an official proceeding. The indictment was issued by a grand jury of citizens here in the District of Columbia, and it sets forth the crimes charged in detail. I encourage everyone to read it in full. The attack on our nation's capital on January 6, 2021, was an unprecedented assault on the seat of American democracy. As described in the indictment, it was fueled by lies. Lies by the defendant targeted at obstructing a bedrock function of the U.S. government, the nation's process of collecting, counting, and certifying the results of the presidential election. The men and women of law enforcement who defended the U.S. Capitol 
on January 6th are heroes. They are patriots and they are the very best of us. They did not just defend a building or the people sheltering in it. They put their lives in the line to defend who we are as a country and as a people. They defended the very institutions and principles that define the United States. Since the attack on our capital, the Department of Justice has remained committed to ensuring accountability for those criminally responsible for what happened that day. This case is brought consistent with that commitment, and our investigation of other individuals continues. In this case, my office will seek a speedy trial so that our evidence can be tested in court and judged by a jury of citizens. In the meantime, I must emphasize that the indictment is only an allegation and that the defendant must be presumed innocent until proven guilty beyond a reasonable doubt in a court of law. I would like to thank the members of the Federal Bureau of Investigation who are working on this investigation with my office, as well as the many career prosecutors and law enforcement agents from around the country who have worked on previous January 6th investigations. These women and men are public servants of the very highest order, and it is a privilege to work alongside them. Thank you. Why didn't you charge any of the other co-conspirators at this event? Are you worried to see that the election? Are you planning to bring any other charges against more individuals? All right, that was just Jack Smith there leaving that press conference. Of course, no questions similar to the last time, but he was reading that indictment there on those four counts against the former president. So that was a live picture right there as we continue to follow this here on Live Now from Fox. Of course, we do have several live pictures. And before I bring in my colleague Andrew Kraft and also attorney Andrew Lee back into this, I do want to just give you a few Live Now looks. Of course, there in Washington, D.C., this live uh, at the uh, the courthouse there, of course, we're expecting to see the former president uh, in Washington, D.C. on Thursday. Also a live look, Bedminster, New Jersey, as we did see uh, a motorcade potentially outside of this. He will have to go down the east coast if he is at this residence there in Bedminster, uh, New Jersey. And also a live picture in Philadelphia. We're going to hear from potentially uh, Attorney General Merrick Garland. This is going to be on a public safety event, but uh, I I wouldn't uh, be surprised if there are several questions from the reporters on this most recent indictment. Unlikely that he'll respond to anything going on there, but we do want to make you aware of this shot there out of Philadelphia here on Live Now from Fox. And of course, let's just continue to bring in my colleague Andrew Kraft, attorney Andrew Lieb here on Live Now from Fox as we also look uh, at this uh, courthouse in Washington, D.C. Hey guys, we're, we're back up here live on Live Now from Fox. Uh, obviously, uh, not many fireworks in this press conference, but he kind of laid out the indictment. What did we hear there, Andrew Lieb? from Jack Smith. We heard a stoic professional going about the business of being exactly what he is, a special counsel. He's going to say the facts. He's not going to say one way or the other. I thought it was important he mentioned the presumption of innocence. He's respecting the system, his role in it, and the charges. He laid them out. He walked off the, the podium, and that was it. Yeah, so I just wanted to offer uh, and to get your thoughts, Andrew, as well, uh, as we're, we're watching outside of the federal courthouse there in D.C., the pretty big courthouse where Donald Trump will have to be on Thursday to face the music. But Jack Smith made it a point, uh, Andrew and Andy, uh, that the allegations in the indictment are, are allegations and that they need to be proved and that you are innocent until proven guilty. But he also made the point, uh, Andrew, that, you know, the investigation continues possibly into other matters and other individuals do you anticipate superseding indictments in the future in the january 6 probe or was donald trump just the first not the last in this investigation that according to jack smith is still ongoing i think that it would be a terrible bet to say that there's not going to be a superseding indictment but i don't expect one necessarily because i don't know what's being told to the grand jury when we talk about a superseding indictment we're talking about adding more defendants adding more charges more counts and we saw that recently in Florida. And one of the things I said before, and I'll say it to you again, is I think that Jack Smith plays three-dimensional chess, and he knows that Donald Trump 
loves, as I mentioned before, to play politics. He wants to play Jenga and he wants to just pull out the piece and he wants to win the presidency at all costs. But while Donald Trump's doing that, Jack Smith and his team are watching everything Donald Trump says and does. And when Donald Trump puts his foot in his mouth, that's when I think Jack Smith pounces. I've not spoken to Jack Smith. I haven't spoken to his team. I have no information to corroborate what I'm saying. But it seems to me, based on that superseding indictment down in Florida, that Jack Smith likes Donald Trump to put himself in a corner, and then he likes to lock him down. This is a trained assassin when it comes to the law and prosecuting, Andrew and Andy. Uh, of course, and I think we, we touched on a lot of the different facets there. And like you said, the superseding potential indictment as well. We're looking live there in Washington, D.C. Uh, obviously, we talked about it already, but give us a breakdown. What happens on Thursday exactly with the former president there appearing, summoning before a judge? Yeah, it's going to be a deja vu experience. We've done it twice now. We did it in New York. We did it in Florida. First and foremost, there's security protocols. We have to realize that this is a guy that has Secret Service protection. I'm imagining that's why he has advanced notice of what's going on, because his people need to coordinate and keep him safe. He is a former president, and it's very important to do that. It's going to lock down the courthouse. It's probably going to disturb all sorts of other proceedings. But in sum and substance, what happens for any defendants is they come in, they wave a public reading of the charges. I guess Donald Trump could hear the reading, but they could just wave it. Why hear it again? You have it on paper. They enter a plea of not guilty. They get terms of release, meaning that there could be, he has to do this, he has to do that. He needs to not travel here. There could be a confidentiality rule. I doubt there's gonna be a gag order, but there could be a confidentiality ruling. But really it's gonna be come in, get the charges, get a plea of not guilty, and leave with terms with a new date that you're gonna come back. It's that simple. You know, uh, I just wanted to kind of bring up this really bombshell report uh, over the weekend from the Washington Post that I think uh, is so, you know, related to this. It, it doesn't have to do with the indictment, but it has to do with Trump's mounting legal bills. The Save America PAC apparently uh, is paying the legal bills of the former president uh, upwards of about $40 million. Um, Andrew, you have clients, you charge your clients, you make a living doing this. His, you know, mammoth team of attorneys are very, very expensive in all of these cases. Uh, there was a report out today in the New York Times that some of these super PACs supporting the former president's reelection effort are almost broke because of these legal fees incurred by all of these cases. That's just, I know, a political element to this. This is all very expensive. Um, still, though, it's all very expensive for a self-made billionaire, right? Well, there's two aspects to that. One is it's not just political, there's ethics rules. So if Andy was gonna hire me and Andrew, you were gonna pay my bill, for you to pay my bill, you would get all sort of confidential information between Andy and I. So I hope there's ethics informed consent waivers and conflict of interest waivers between them. I represent some insurance companies and when they end up defending a client, we need that client to sign a waiver because they don't get the full extent of attorney client privilege and confidences. That's a legal aspect. Now to the political one, Chris Christie's just loving this. He's hitting Trump left and right about this. When you donate to Trump, you're donating to his criminal defense. That's what Chris Christie will tell you. And whether that's good or bad, maybe you want to do that. But just realize that that's what the donation is. Maybe it's a good donation. Maybe it's a bad donation. Maybe it's a means to the end. But as you say, they're spending their money on that as opposed to pu pumping up their candidate, as opposed to doing up research, as opposed to getting him prepped for debate if he even goes. So it's a tremendous amount of money. I will say that a lot of attorneys might not have even taken the case from this billionaire, though, if the super PACs weren't paying for it. Why? Because there's report after report after report of him not paying his bills over time. And there was a hard time in the news of attorneys that wanted to take the case. That all said, it's all on the up and up. We all know about it, assuming that there's that conflict of interest waiver. And it's fair game for Chris Christie to keep pouncing on this and pointing it out to the voters and trying to steal away voters from Trump to get that Republican nominee. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, different complex facets to this, the indictment, potentially that, with also the 2024 campaign, Andrew Lee, Andrew Kraft. Uh, well, I think we touched on, I know we could talk about this all day, but certainly uh, anything else you want to mention before we kind of wrap this, put a bow on this uh, and let people uh, catch their breath a little bit? 
for me, all I can say to you is I'm overwhelmed, as I hope that Donald Trump finally gets. I know that I mentioned before the Jenga and the end game and winning politics. But I would hope that someone who wants to be president, someone who was president, someone who had the dignity of the presidency, whether you think these charges were good or bad, whether you think they were right or wrong, I would hope that one would respect the dignity of our U.S. government, the dignity of our court system, and give it the respect it deserves and defend like a defendant should defend and show not that you're innocent, but that you're not guilty. There is a presumption of innocence here. They do have to prove beyond a reasonable doubt. But let's give this the decorum that it deserves. This is the U.S. court system. I hope Donald Trump will do that, Andy and Andrew. All right, uh, and Andrew Lee, we always appreciate this. Uh, you and I were speaking last night, uh, and I kind of was telling you, you got to get ready because we were going to really be using you throughout the week. I didn't know it would be the next day. Um, but we're going to be doing this throughout the course of the evening here, just to let our viewers know, programming note, speaking with legal analysts, talking about the case itself, talking about the indictment, but also bringing on uh, political reporters as well, talking about those implications and ramifications for the 2024 election and for Donald Trump's campaign. Uh, Andrew, thanks so much. We'll talk again. Yeah. Thanks, guys.